Yes, greetings, 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 salam to Tainayas Link. This is Ras Ayodonis Tafar. This is Yadin here, LOJ, the Lion of Judah Society. And we was asked a question, a sister actually had asked a question concerning um, a document, the demonology of, of King James. I don't know if ones and ones have come across that particular subject matter concerning um, King James, at least um, one of the King James, there's a few Jacobus, Icobus, Jacobus, right? So King James, right? Um, history is so very important and reviewing history from a non-biased, non-racial perspective. Now, want to heal up real history, real history, WW, right? It's a site that definitely needs our support. We support that particular site and also, you know, need to kind of archive, you know, in our own private archives the researches and results from what is called Real History WW, the site Real History WW. Because some might dispute when one say, okay, black nobility. You've heard that term, black nobility. Now, understand this. Whenever we hear the term black nobility in the popular white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, as we mentioned before, if they have white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, that means opposite and vis-a-vis -vis to that, there must be what they call a... Um, black Anglo-Saxon Protestant, right? So it's kind of interesting how England has dealt with, quote, racism, right? Or has kind of obscured, you know, the ob obfuscation, right, of it, right? So we, it's there right in front of us, but we don't really see it, see it. I mean, we kind of like eyes wide shut, eyes open, like why uh, eyes... <laughs> Yeah, why it sheds like the eyes open, but we're not we're not seeing. They're seeing, seeing, right? But they don't perceive, and hearing, hearing, they don't understand, right? So they, they they can't really think different than the way they've been made to believe. So there's a whole series on Black Britain, Black Britain. Can we do this right here just to kind of show you really quickly what we mean right here before we try to address you know the main part of this particular study right here so here we got this this is as you can see the site at the top real history ww right this is the section on i think the second page on black britain and it says this basically right here after several hundred years of falsified racist history we have as we have all been taught there were no blacks in Europe, and those that were there were African slaves, right? This is a, even the term African is a terminology of coined later on over the past kind of maybe 400, the latter part of the 400 years. But they say they were African slaves, servants, or African charity cases. This is how the falsified racist and racial history coming out of Europe, particularly out of um, Britain, or we can say it's Black Britain, comes down to us today. Now, Black research, like our own, speaking of um, Real History WW, has forced the lying European albinos right, to make some grudging minor admissions like this. Now, many ones, when they say about Europeans, even there's a way of referring to like Negropeans. You might have the term like Negropeans. And it's funny. <laughs> it could be funny as uck. You know, Negropean, he's a Negropean. But what, what we're doing right there is we're, we're obfuscating our own story and the story of our own ancestors, right? You know, wherever water touches land, great historian, one of our own, J.A. Rogers says, you will find Ethiopians there. And that terminology at the time would say you will find black people. Black people identified outside of the so-called Western Gentile you know, falsified, calcified, pineal gland, you know, enslavement theories. Also, all these theories. Now, we know there's some truth to what has happened, but it's not what's, what truly has happened is these exaggerations, right, or falsification, the falsifications and exaggerations. Now, although this particular vlog is on the um, demonology, right, the demonology of King James, and what we're starting out right here is, first of all, we have to put things into context, right, and we can go through a little bit more right here. Let's point this out right here. While Europe's lying albino, so you have European black people or black so-called Europeans, and you have European albinos. This is part of the, the covered up history, 
right? Ones like to make you believe that there was only white people in Europe and the people who you see were black historically in Europe were either, you know, some exception or were like a slave or somebody who was freed or, you know, was a, a Christian knight. Like they try to say every knight that you see was, was um, a knight named, the black knight named Maurice. So, so they try to give all the different, even though the knights are different, they even have different attributions, so forth. And so on, they try to say it's all one black, so there was one black knight that just ran all over Europe and everything. Yeah, I guess he was like the black knight, you know, like a cartoon character. That's what they want to make you believe, right? Also want to make you believe when we say Europeans, even some of the ones and ones in social media love to say European, the European, the European, and then imply, like, or make you believe that the European, this terminology only means a white person it's like we say uh, somebody who's British right it could be a black British person right a black English person right they could be from from the Caribbean they could be from Africa they could be from from anywhere else where black people be right see we think and tend to have been made to believe only black people are only in you know only in Africa or, or all of us just came from West Africa but then when our DNA is being traced all around the world they say well that's because of the white man you know raping our mothers and you know even some of the fathers too if the truth be told but raping our mothers and the black woman and this is how we get it even though that's not quite accurately true especially when we put together the other half of the story so while Europe's lying albinos foolishly ponder just how much truth they can afford to admit we continue with our research and share of same now we just gonna point this out right here one name John Mackey right John Mackey right there's this book by John Mackey if you haven't gotten this book by John Mackey and it kind of backs up a lot of other information. This was a back in 17, he died in 1726, so he wrote the book before 1726. This is the actual book, right, along with other books, but this one here hasn't been as suppressed. There's other documents that once were available, but we can't find them anymore, but they have been cited by others that are not quite available. So what they do is they take the availability of many ancient books, like many, much ancient artifacts, even from Egypt, even from the Levant, what they call the State of Israel. A lot of artifacts have been found, but not been released because it would change the whole falsified racist history paradigm concerning black people, right? Concerning black people um, past, right? And therefore affecting Right, black people of the future as we try to figure out well who we are where we're from what really happened what really went on what was the true elements of what we know about history like we know there was an enslavement trade right but then we don't know the fullness of it it's been kind of given to us in a false narrative right or a white anglo-saxon protestant mythology so this is to destroy that white anglo-saxon protestant mythology and looking at real history Right, so Dictionary of National Biography, you find this right here. This is on this individual named John Mackey. He was a government agent or spy. He was the author of something called The Memoirs of Secret Services. Right, The Memoirs of Secret Services. Now, he goes into a lot of interesting detail, and this is written right at that time. I want to point this out. It's not a book that was written like, like, like 50 or even a hundred years later, this is written in the same approximate time as the persons right, that he mentions and he um, describes right, within his document. Now here is the title page of the, of the document, Memoirs of the, the Secret Services of John Mackey during the reigns of King William, Queen Anne, and King George I. Right. This is this particular document. You can tell us so the old type, old book right there. And this gives a kind of a little a sample right here. Right. So Charles Lenos, Duke of Richmond, is son to King Charles II by the Duchess of, of Portsmouth. Right. Portsmouth. Right. Goes on down here. Says was carried by his mother into France in the reign of King James and left France in the reign of King Williams when he declared himself for the religion and constitution of his country. Let's zoom in right down here. This is just a sample. There's a lot of samples here. I like to do that in another vlog and video, right? But just, just sample it right here. He is a gentleman, good natured to a fall, well-bred, um, very well-bred, and hath many valuable things in him. Is an enemy to business. 
because business was seen to be more like a secular activity, an enemy to business, right? A very credulous, well-shaped, black complexion. I want you to notice that this right over here where it says what? It says black complexion, right? Much like King Charles, not 30 years old. Hmm. Isn't this interesting, right? This is probably one of the primary documents that they suppress a lot of other documents, but this particular document is still, how can we say, available, right? Then we see other fakes, right? A lot of the portraits, portraits you see, as the Rasta men would say, portraits are portraits, right? They've been albinicized, if we can coin that word there, right? As we look at other information, notice this one here says at the bottom, the red highlight, it says, the red underline, it says, of middle stature brown complexion a middle stature brown complexion all right now i was actually going to do this on the demonology but seeing where we're at right now we might just be able to kind of touch on the the raciology like the black royalty right proof right the black royalty proof like that blacks ruled europe this is one of the proofs Right, that blacks ruled Europe as well as clarifying. Like notice this. So we're looking at the portraits, the portraits that they did, that most people will go to and say, Oh, these black people, they're Afrocentrics, they're crazy. Right? Well, you know, oppression makes the wise man down pressure makes the wise man mad, you know. So yeah, well, whatever. But even if you want to say the Afrocentrics or some of us or these or those are so called crazy. Right? It's the crazy lies, it's the lies, it's the obfuscation, the cover-up of the truth, right? And, and so, so um, in plain sight, right? So we see this right here. This is a fake white portrait of black Daniel Finch, right? And here's a description of Daniel, Earl of Nottingham, Secretary of State, in a credible document. Of course, they'll try to make this document not credible because we have evidence. And we're pointing out evidence, evidence that was already in their libraries, evidence that they point to for other things, but evidence that they suppress when we start to talk about, well, who's who and who was who in Europe, right? So here you see where it describes him. It says, in his habit and manners, very formal, a tall, thin, very black man, like a Spaniard or Jew. You see what it says? Like, let's let, zoom in. People might not be able to see that right there at the bottom right there, right? A tall, thin, very black man, like a Spaniard or Jew, about 50 years old. So this writer here, right, a special agent, all of that, you know, did investigation, wrote memoirs, you know, like they do this even today, where they have like, you know, um, write-ups on different ones, you know, people who are influential in business and politics or whatever, it talks about them, it describes them, their, their, their strengths, their weaknesses, so forth and so on. So this man is said to be a tall, thin, very black man, very what, black man. Now, one thing about the English at this time, back in the 1600s and 1700s, they did not use these words idly. Right? People have been arguing this whole swarthy thing, you know, like swarthy already. Those are points. But here we have evidence where it says outright, very black man. Like a what? A Spaniard. So when we talk about we as black Jews and Hebrews and some were like Moreno or Spanish speaking, you know, people think that we're talking about, uh, you know, some other kind of, of person. But we're speaking about black people. Black people who happen to be Spanish speaking black people. Black people happen to be Hebrew, you know, or Yehudi or Jewish black people. And we're speaking about history that states the same, right? So this is actual evidence, right? But like I say, there is more evidence, but we like to point out this evidence because real history has made this evidence so evident and so available. Now, here, if we go through this right here, these are other highlights and clips of other ones. Let's zoom, zoom this out so ones can see this more fully. Right, we can see over on the right hand, right, it says it's about the court. You see, this is about the court of Great Britain, right? Different influential dukes and others were part of the nobility and also upheld the black royalty. Now, note that whenever we hear black royalty, or rather, black nobility, you know, the black nobility, they're said to be some real spooky kind of people, right? You know, they were into all this occult and evil doing and this and that. 
interesting. It's like how the black cat, right? A beautiful cat, the black cat was demonized. Why? Because of the evil that it, no, because it was black. You see, the same thing went on with the black royalty and the black nobility. They were demonized because they were black, like the black cat, right? So here it says of the Duke of St. Albans, St. Albans. Maybe this is one of the reasons why we gravitate to certain words and, and, and names, even after all these years, even in the Americas and the captivity. You know, like St. Albans is a place out in Queens, right? St. Albans. But no, it said he is of a black complexion, not so tall as the Duke of Northumberland yet very like King Charles. Now remember, King Charles was the first king that they beheaded. King Charles. King Charles. That's why it's interesting now with, you know, um, the Queen of England, you know, being pronounced dead and her son, Prince Charles, being announced as the new king of England, King Charles III. People forget, as we mentioned in two of our videos briefly, that they killed the first king that they had killed, that they had beheaded, which caused the monarchy to be to be stopped. They, they, they had removed the monarchy from England in English history. People don't really know about this. And that first king that they removed the monarchy and they beheaded him, he was King Charles. And he is describing this Duke of St. Albans as being of a black complexion, not so tall as the Duke of Northumberland, yet very like, very much like King Charles, turned of 30 years old. Let's scroll down here. I just scroll down here. This is speaking about this other Duke right here. We have the Duke of um, Somerset, right? Master of the horse. He was a master of the horse. And we also know that the original cowboys, even over here in America, were black men. Right? Even the original Long Ranger was based on a black cowboy. Right? This, this was told to us early on in the 90s, and for many ones and ones, that was kind of hard to even believe and accept then. Right? Since then, we've, we've received a plethora of factual information to verify. This is well known. But yet people, when they hear about the Long Ranger, you know, they think of a white man. They, when they hear a cowboy, they think of a white man. And if you were to tell many people that these people originally were black people and the whole cowboy tradition was basically mastered by black people. And of course, white people picked up on it, like a lot of other things that black people either created or mastered or did. White people picked up. People pick up on what people do. But now, that's not the problem that black people did this first or before and white people picked up on it. The problem is when one tried to say that they originated it and black people knew nothing about it. And, you know what I mean, is where you, where you lie. <laughs> Basically, the, the lies, the straight outright lies. Here, it says that he's of a middle stature, well-shaped, a very black, of a very black complexion. You see the next one in the center right here, who is John, Duke of Buckinghamshire and, 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 and Lord Privy Seal, the Privy Seal of the kingdom. It says down here, he is of a brown complexion. Well, what about Charles Fitzroy, Duke of um, Grafton, right? It explains here that he was a tall, a tall black man, about 25 years old, right? This is all historical data. This is, this is given a description of ones and ones. Why? Why? This one says black, my tall black red faced man. You know, the reddish brown. We're looking at reddish brown, not that cartoon red that white supremacy like to use when they talk about red. It's talking about the nature red, the real red, right? Here it says of a black complexion, very well made, not 40 years old. This one here, it says right here, tall, thin, black man, about 35. This other one over here, he is very fat, black, turned of 60 years old, right? Richard, Earl of, um, what is that, R Ranala, Ranala. He had that old English type, so excuse me if we, you know, miss one or two here or there. This one is of a black complexion, past 40 years old, right? Black complexion, right? black ruddy you see what says ruddy complexion over here you see what says black ruddy complexion right now notice how they try to tell us that ruddy 
means like if a white person, uh, uh, like an albino or pale white person, um, shows emotion, like they get excited, happy or sad, and they blush. They try to tell us that ruddy means blush because this word also is the word in English that defines Adam according to the biblical tradition which would basically prove by this that even in Europe they knew at that time that even Adam, the first man according to the biblical tradition, was a black man. All right? See, these are things are known. They might seem like new knowledge today because we've been lied to for so long. Right? A brown man, not 40 years old, Neville, Lord of Lovelace. Right? These ones down here, he is a middle, middle statured brown man, Earl of Feversham. Right? Feversham. This one over here, George, Lord of Avergavani, Aber, Avergavani, right? Here, he is a little brown man. A little what? Brown. So it's about brown, black, reddish, right? Ruddy, right? Reddish brown. You see what I'm saying? Right here, you see what they're saying. You see what the evidence is saying. A thin, brown, handsome man, right, is a thin, brown man, 50 years old, a black man, now remember, this is actually from a spy's document. This is like a secret memoir, right? That somehow did not remain secret, and thank Cha, it did not remain secret, right? Because we now have this as a point proof amongst the other points and proofs, right? Here, this one is a tall black man, 50, right? This one is a son, the, the son, a handsome black man turned of 30 years of age. Right here, it says he is very well-shaped black man, right? In other words, you know how they say like black man being, you know, fit, you know, black man being fit, you know, all the bodybuilding stuff among black men. So we don't know this is true, right? Here it says of this one right here, Sir Stafford Fearborn, Vice Admiral. It says that he have a good, good sense, is fat, swarthy. Notice it says swarthy here, of a Moorish this one says a Moorish complexion. So it's not even using the same word, but it tells us that the description is describing each one, right? As they are like others and also as they are distinct from others, right? Remember, we're talking about the 1600s, right? The, seventh, the, the 1600s is what, what this is testifying to. During, that's about 400 years, right? We talk about 400 years. That means something happened 400 years ago. We hear about the white Anglo-Saxon prize in white. If they were all white, white they could have just said Anglo-Protestant, right? Anglo-Saxon Protestant. But because they say white, that tells the, the wise amongst us, right? Those of us who can hear the voice of wisdom, right? Wisma, hear her voice. We say, uh-oh, something's up right here. Something's up right here. Black Anglo-Saxon Protestant, they're not talking about, but they say white. So if you have to say, emphasize white, I would say this is a white European. If I say this is a white African, does not tell you that well, there they must be other Africans that are not white? Yes. So here it says he is a black man towards 50 years old. Here this one says he's a very black complexion. We're talking about the Marquis right, of Annandale, right, president of the council. He was a very black man. We're speaking about the black royalty and nobility. We're speaking the facts of this. They say if you want to hide something from people, especially our people, once lost now found, where do you put it? They say, you put it in the book. Well, this is in the book right here. A rough, fat, black, right, um, nose, noisy, nosy man, or noisy man, right, Lord Belhaven, right, over here, the Earl of Kingston. The Earl of Kingston, he makes a good figure, is of a black complexion, well made, not 40 years old. Down here, it says that this one right here, trade and his genius lay very much this way. A handsome man of a brown complexion turned to 50 years old. Now, now notice that we, we are continuing to go on speaking of various different ones. Right? He is a stern man of a brown complexion. Well, he is a tall, thin man. Brown complexion. This one is handsome in his person. A brown man turned to 50 years old. Let's go down. You can see their names at the top. We just want to get to the highlights, the underlines. A short brown man towards 60 years old. This one right here, a man, thin man, is a low, thin man, brown complexion, full of fire. I mean, listen to the description. That's Andrew Fletcher of, of Salston, right? Salton, right? This one here, it says he is of middle stature. 
with a quick look of a brown complexion and towards 50, 50 years old. This is the nobility of Scotland, the Earl of Perth, right? The Earl of Perth. So now it kind of makes sense when they talk about like the Irish and other ones, some white folks talk about how they were treated like niggas and treated like black people. We hear this, we know this historically, that certain people who are called white people say they were treated like niggas or like, does it make sense now? Mm-hmm. Because there were these men of distinction and other men, right, and no doubt women too, but these particular men, right, in Europe, in England at this time, of course they had descendants, right? But see, what they cover up, right? They cover up with these fake pictures, right? And give thanks to Real History WW for pointing that out. We need to get this in circulation, right? He is a tall, black, right? Stoops in the shoulder, right? So tall, black, stoop. So we get a description of what he looked like, what he did. And then we start to look at the pictures that they paint, the lying pictures that they have painted, right? That's what we got to debunk, you see? Debunk white lies. So we'd love to go through this. Uh, hopefully the real history, like to work with real history, even to support, you know, documentaries where this can be narrated and the pictures can be shown, right? Mackey, he describes John Duke of Newcastle, page 35, as he is a black, ruddy, complexion man, right? And he describes the Earl of Middleton, right, on page 238. Remember, this is the book. We're looking at different pages, highlights. He is a black man of middle stature with a sanguine, use this term, sanguine, right, complexion. Obvious then, we cannot even trust the albino people to tell us what certain words mean. We can't trust them. We have to go look it up for ourselves. You know what I mean? For ourselves. So right here it says, but one thing that we can depend upon the albino people for is the most outrageous lies possible. And they are good at that, especially when they are in the mode of lying. It has come to our attention that in order to explain away this material, some albino people have taken to saying things like this, quote, in old Britain, everyone who was tanned was called black. Everyone who's tanned was called black. See, this is the most ridiculous, outrageous. You ever seen those movies and TV shows where sometimes just among white folks, right? One white person is like a liar or a thief or something. They're trying to get the truth out of them. And they get them and they try and like, they may torture them a little bit. They tell us the truth and they'll tell them something and it'll sound like the truth. And the other white person will say to the lying white person that, no, this is not, you're not telling me everything. Say, yes, I am. And they torture them more. And then more truth comes out. You ever, you, you ever see that in movies? It's like the first time they say something, they're not really giving you the truth. Even in their own movies and TV shows, they, then they torture them or try to get the truth out of them. More, more pressure on them. And then finally, the truth really comes out, but it doesn't come out at first. Have you noticed that? So why do we keep seeing that in movies and TV shows? And it's white people talking about other white people. It's like they're telling us their nature, how they are. So how can we then... Now, read this for ourselves, not believe our lying, no, uh, is our eyes lying, right? And then we ask them, well, what does it mean? Well, they say, no, Britain, everyone who was tan was called black, swarthy, dark, or brown. Really? Really? Let's look at white people who are tan. Are they this? No, they're not. Sometimes they're red. You know what I mean? They're, they're red, but, but like burnt, not, not the swarthy. We, we know the difference between this. this, this is, these are lies. How sad that they felt, felt the need to lower themselves to such depths, right? Well, a gutter snake is still in the gutter, and it's a gutter snake for that reason. It's called a gutter snake. But that particular lie is easily debunked by this article in the online UK paper, The Telegraph, where it says, headline, sunbathing can be good for you, says health charities, right? Sunbathing can be good for you. Right, and and then they tell you all of this research there. You can pause this and read over it. Right, let's continue right here. Right, right, the climate, sunbathing. Now notice nowadays they they get into more of a scientific approach to this. Right, from that article we are able to debunk two lies. The first is 
the old albino lie that their skin is the result of an evolutionary change which allows them to better absorb sun's UV rays for vitamin D production. That's an old lie that they used to tell once, that their, their skin is for that, right? If that were true, they wouldn't be getting the disease called rickets. Rickets, this is science. Science is not make-believe, it's not spirituality on a sense of where somebody's saying like God told you. No, science tells us this, right? And also, you can clearly see from the article that it would be next to impossible for a white Briton to be deeply tan without serious consequences, right? As a reminder, the max UV strength is 11 or 12, depending on the scale used. As you can see below, Britain barely reaches halfway. So that means that even if it was so that in Britain some white albino Europeans were allegedly tanning, that's why they call them swarthy, that's why they call them black, that's why they call them ruddy, which is a lie. It's a lie because in the UK, right, Britain, the UV strength doesn't even reach that. It doesn't even reach that level, right? It doesn't even reach that strong in the UK. So that means these ones would have been traveling someplace else, coming back, like from vacation. And we even know that people really didn't do that like that. That the sun strength in the UK is not that way. That's why even some black folks actually when they're in Europe for, for a while, we sometimes say that ones and ones get a little pale. That we get a little pale. But it's not like they turn white. But the black, the black complexion is somewhat pale it's off it's like it, it's it's like not polished you know what i'm saying but then they go to caribbean they go someplace and then they get that back right so these are a bu bunch of lies right then there is right this the nonsense of white skin evolved to increase vitamin d absorption debunked so they've been telling us that well white so-called albino white skin evolved because it was really helpful for them well, if it was so helpful, then why scientifically there's a lot of caution to harm that ones have to take precaution because of certain, you know, complexions, right, and certain elemental factors. So you can see how they lie to even themselves. They have lied to themselves even in their pseudoscience. So there's science and there's pseudoscience, and sometimes in science there is pseudoscience because it contradicts what we can know and prove by so-called real science. So it's about scientific literacy, brothers and sisters, yeah? You know, vitamin D production, as we're about biblical Hebrew, you know, Torah literacy, but here we're speaking about this. Vitamin D production after UVB exposure depends on baseline vitamin D and total cholesterol, but not on skin pigmentation. Uh-oh. So that means vitamin D production after UVB exposure, you know I mean, exposed to the sun, it depends on the baseline vitamin D, like how much vitamin D you already have at, at the baseline and the total cholesterol, but not on skin pigmentation, not on what? Not on skin pigmentation, uh-oh. Now getting into some of the details right here, look down here, look what it says down here at the bottom of the article. It says, in addition, we paired a dark skin group with a fair skin group according to baseline 25-OHD levels and found no differences in 25-OHD increase after identical UVB exposure. So you see the pseudoscience that people believed before, right, about albino or white skin? Because saying right here, they paired a dark skin group with a fair skin group according to the baseline and then after identical UVB exposure like to the sun and the rays and everything, there was no difference afterwards, right, in both of that. See, see, th these are the, the scientific articles that go below the baseline and then what they do, right, then what they do is that they'll throw out the lie, the truth will come out, but people don't find the truth so sexy. It's like the lie... You know, the lie goes around the world a thousand times before the truth has put on his boots once, so to speak, right? But still, you know, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And you know what I mean? So that shows how much they want to keep people under this mind control, in, sla in a kind of a mental sla uh, uh, illiteracy, right? A lack of basic understanding. So we have a little bit more, the nobility of Scotland. Mm-hmm. This style makes a lot of sense why some in the Caribbean 
and even parts of America, like black people, sometimes we call it like a patois, or we'll call it like, like, like you know, there's different ways to refer to like black people's accents, you know, like the Caribbean accent or whatnot. But you notice there's a strong Irish and even Scottish, right? There's a strong Irish and Scottish kind of undertone to a lot of, um, we say, Jamaican patois and other sort of speech patterns of black people in the Caribbean. Then we're learning on the other hand that there were black people in the nobility over in Scotland and Britain and Ireland uh, over there. So w what's happening here? Right? This one right here was of a black complexion. Right? Of a bl James, Duke of Hamilton. Right? Then we have fake pictures like this. Mm -hmm. Fake pictures like this. So basically we're going to pick up on that whole demonology. Right? The demonology um, reasoning, but this one is going to be more on Black Britain, right? The half of the story you were never told. This is the other half of the story that you and I, we were never told. And now that we can see the evidence for ourselves, there's a lot of um, explaining away liars that are trying to explain it away. Like, like we see, okay, this one is of a middle, you know, stature, well shape of a brown complexion. Well, he was brown because he was a white man for tan. We already just debunked that. Right, so those who probably was trying to go there, that's been debunked. Right, by scientific literacy. Right, if you're illiterate, then you won't really understand, and you'll think that the lie is true. But if you can read, you'll recognize. Oh, they're basically saying that the belief that they put out before was false, because here's a scientific study. Here's the evidence. Why? This one right here, Robert Lord of Lexington. Right, it says agreeable companion, handsome, of a brown complexion, 40 years old. Notice this one right here. This is, um, well, Algernon uh, Camp or Earl of Essex. Earl of Essex. It says, the queen continues him in his regiment. Right? So we have the military. We already know black people's successful right, um, history right, in military operations, right? especially you know, in so-called um, European or foreign land, you know, like in Europe, but also here in America. We know about that. You know, like the, um, the Tuskegee, you know, the pilots, you know, um, the Buffalo soldiers. But we see here, there's this one in England, right? The, um, the Duke, the Earl, sorry, the Earl of Essex, right? It says that the Queen continues him in his regiment and has made him Brigadier General, right? Remind me of the, 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 the DJ, hail up Brigadier Jerry. Right? People say, oh, why are you taking on that European thing? But then we now find out it's a part of our, our collective worldwide heritage. This is our heritage as black people, especially over here in the Americas and the Caribbean. Right? He is well-bred gentleman, brown complexion, and well-shaped. But his mouth is always open. You know, this is the, that British humor. He's always talking. He is about 30 years old. <laughs> right? Then we have these ones over here, the Court of Britain. Right? Basil, Basil Fielding, Earl of um, Denbigh, Den, Den High, I think that Den High, Earl of Middleton, right, the Earl of Arrow, right, Earl of Arrow, he is of a brown complexion, right, um, Basil Fielding, Earl of Den High, right, he is, um, it says, very black and turned to 40 years old. What about the Earl of Middleton, right, it says down here that he is a black man of a middle stature, Right? With a sanguine complexion. Mm hmm. See, I keep talking about the reddish brown. And it was more, maybe two decades or so ago when we first started to talk about that. Right? And then we compared nature. See, you have to look at red and ruddy in nature, like that reddish brown ground. Right? We, you know, some of us, I got to share some of those pictures where I could take my hand, put it near the ground. Right? And you can see how it is similar to what we would call reddish brown ground. Now, there's many of us that can do that. Some are a little darker in the, in the, in the complexion, some are a little more cafe au lait. And much of this is also apart from, you know, interjection of white so called genes. We have all these physiognomies as black people. We have the round features, we have the oval features, you know what I'm saying? And we have the combination, you know, of the two. You know what I mean? The round features, the more square features, and then the oval feature, you know, we have the different, you know, um, features as black people. Even the Asian features, like the twa, the twi, you know, people, you know, in South Africa and certain parts of Africa, right? So. Those people, people say are Asian or Chinese or Asian or Oriental, but notice that they are black people, 
right? Black people that are very ancient black people, right? Black people that history even supersedes some of the history we see out in Asia. So that means if we were to look at it more properly scientifically, we can see where the connection of the latter Asian people, right? Definitely having a black root, right? This has been proven elsewise as well. Like not to get into all the, the deeper history, but at, at this time, what we will advise ones to get into deeper history because there's, there's aspects of history that we have been led to believe or we discount because we think, oh, that's just white people were having war up there. But really, we we're speaking about the Black Dynasty in Britain, which was the House of Stuart, the House of Stuart, Stuart, right? The Jacobites. This is what we're talking about right here. We actually just put this uh, as, a, as a screen shot so ones can take a screenshot of this for those who may have stumbled onto this page via web search and wonder as to its meaning and context here is your answer so same thing with this vlog this video here we're going to just focus on the black britain right the black britain you know um aspect you know you know what they you know what they didn't tell you what they didn't tell i you know what they covered up from us you know the black nobility the black royalty those who research history know that the 30 years wars in continental europe from 1618 to 1648 and the english civil war from 1642 to 1651 were really race wars people don't a lot of people don't know that but these 30, the 30 year war and the civil war in the english civil war were racial wars having to do with removing black rule and hegemony in europe Though, of course, the albinos did not frame it like that at the time because blacks were um, naively on both sides, right? In other words, blacks were on both sides of it. It's like the politics in America. You know, people be arguing, Democrat, Republican, so forth and so on. But when you really look at the, the big picture and then zoom in on the details, you recognize history repeats itself. But regardless of what the albinos called it, the ultimate result was the fall of the Black Holy Roman Empire. We've been speaking about this. The Black Holy Roman Empire, 962 to 1806 in Europe. And the fall of the last purely Black dynasty in Britain, the House of Stuarts, who are referred to as the Jacobites. Those Blacks that were not killed were expelled. I want to zoom in on that. Those black people who were not killed, whether in the Thirty Years' War in continental Europe or the English Civil War, they were expelled and scattered through the Americas, mostly now as enslaved, enslaved. But sometimes they were sent over as indentures, like indentured servants. And mostly we're in the Caribbean and North America. This is why some of us might have this psychological thing going on. We're like, okay, somehow the names that we have, that so-called family names that we have gotten, you might feel that there's another connection, but you're like, I'm African, I'm black, I'm African from Africa, so why am I doing this white person European name? And the half of the story that we don't even know or haven't been told is that it's not just a so-called European name, that this, was, this is a relic of our ancestors. Then we go get a DNA and they say, well, you got this much blood coming out of Europe and you're thinking, oh man, they must have raped my grandmama over and over again and this is, I got white blood in me. Even though many people can trace their lineages and really do not have, like the white man did rape, right? He did rape a lot of black women. Yes, he did during the enslavement time. But not all black women did he rape. Right? He, he did this, right? Some were interested in sex, some were not interested in sex. So for us to think that every time we have somebody who's a little light skin or has a different complexion or different features, oh, that must be what you got from your white side. Even though in some families, we can trace our lineage going back hundreds of years, right? I know with my own family, the Geechee, the Gullah side of the family, we can trace our uh, you know, ancestors going back several hundreds of years. You know, back to those, the, the Gullah, the Gullah Wars, along with the Native Americans against the United States Army, you know, and also in other parts. So note this right here, that because of this, this, this warfare and destruction of two things, the Black Holy Roman Empire, that explains why we have all these black icons and eye traits popping up out of the woodwork, right? You know, and they were used to try to say, well, this is because people burn like 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 candles and that was soot on the pictures. Right. But now we know better. 
that was in soot on the pictures. They were basically portraying themselves as they were, right? And much of this was still very much honored by certain Europeans, recognized the value of it, but the racial influence predominated. It, we say the, the, the devilishment among the albinos took over. But there were other albinos who recognized the value of this. This is why we still have some of these pictures to this day. So, so we have to acknowledge that as well, that not all of them were. Because even we have to divide and conquer our enemies, right? So those who are about the truth, we have to note them, right? And even make use of them, right? And those that was not, we have to identify them as what they were. This is almost the same thing they did to really undermine the Black Holy Roman Empire and the Black Dynasty in Britain, known as the House of Stuarts or the Jacobites. Now, those blacks that were not killed, they were expelled, scattered to in America, many of them mostly as slaves, they were enslaved, and sometimes as indentured. That's why sometimes we might know in our family some stories that have been passed on and they sound outrageous. Like, what? Like what? We came from Europe. I know of a few families that, that have this story that passed, they keep it in their family. That they still recall that their people came from Europe because these things were passed on as a secret from generation to generation. But of course, after a while, when it comes down to some generations, like, oh, that's some craziness. We can't be that. Just like some of us might have more Native American, you know, um, um, influence, you know what I mean, and, 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 and DNA in our family. Right? And maybe some of our family might be native to this place. Because, see, we keep thinking that the only blacks in the world were in Africa, because that's a part of the albino lot. Since that time, the albino people have busied themselves erasing all evidence of their murderous atrocities. We know that already. Even today, came across an article. Actually, yesterday, came across an article. Um, it, was, it was like early morning, so technically it could be either or, but recently came across an article that basically said how they don't want to teach about like the black slave revolt in school. That, that because the feeling of some of the albino educators in America and others, and maybe some of those black people who have been so-called brain white whitewashed, they've been brain whitewashed, they don't want to read about that history or teach their children, but it's a part of history. Can you imagine the European Jews not talking about their fighting against the Nazi influence and bringing the Nazis to task for their liberation of themselves? And you say, well, you can't talk about that because it hurts some of the German feelings. You know what I'm saying? But with us, we're told not to talk about this, but they're trying to remove the evidence of what happened so they can write a new mythology, a new white Anglo-Saxon Protestant lie. Right? while they are busying themselves erasing all the evidence of what happened and then also shutting down on the discussion. How many times they were supposed to have this discussion on race in America? It was during the Clinton time. Then they brought up that whole sexual Monica Lewinsky thing right? to kind of divert from that. So every time this discussion is supposed to go on, right? It doesn't go on, right, because the rulers, the movers and shakers among the Albanians, they know that if this goes on, right, and, and, and it really becomes a discussion as it should, this would undermine their power play, their privilege, so-called white privilege. The whole system of things would be undermined. This is why this is such a hot point of the battle. You'll notice that on the Reddit sites, on the Quora sites, on all the sites, it's talking about black this, you know, the black people really ancient Egyptians, are the black people really that, are the Afrocentrics crazy, uh, da, 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 da. you know, they're going back and forth on everything like, like, like crazy, right, like crazy, right, to try to debunk every piece of evidence and information even sometimes they'll make up things that they'll say black people believe in which we don't or many blacks don't believe in and try to act like it in order to make it seem crazy so that whenever you hear anyone speak on these things even while providing proof and evidence you will dismiss it all right it's, it's that old mind control so all the evidences of blacks in europe is also being covered up in fact we heard that some of these are uh, um um historical um testimony like monuments that are in public they have taken them down recently some of these things have been taken down some of these things have been in public for for hundreds of years but they've taken down some they've actually made copies of and whitened right you know like made it more like eurocentric they took the they, they didn't destroy the old one like even some madonnas at one church um, Real History has on one page, that would be a good video to share with ones and ones, where you can see the, the, the new version they put in this church, but then the old picture, the old version, 
and it might seem similar but when you look at it carefully they even change the features on the new ones to make them more albino or more eurocentric or more white whitened let's put it like that because we can't give them europe because we have a lot of ancestral you know like there's the ancestors who also you know lived for it and died right for truth and rights in europe and to to ignore them Right? It's like ignoring the African, you know, what, what was done in Africa to our people or anywhere on the face of this earthly plane. So the albino people are uh, busying themselves to erase all evidence or cover it up of the murderous atrocities, right? And all evidence of blacks in Europe and the entire world for that matter. While at the same time, what they do, and you got to get up on this people. Right, highlight these fake paintings, and not just fake painting talking about Europe. There's fake Egyptology. There's a whole real history breaks that down. Right, fake Egyptology, fake pictures, fake statues, you know, engraving statues of the albinos, which they falsely identify as those now erased black people. So what they've done is hide a lot of the archaeology in the back rooms. That's how a lot of this truth has come out. People have thought the, the same lie and then they are able to get, you know, uh, like a ringside seat or able to go into some places and find these things hidden. Right? And they're shocked because they thought, I was believing this and, and this is how these things leak out, so to speak. Right? Note that fake white paintings of probably all of the black British people revealed here can be found at the online site of the National Portrait Gallery of Britain. Right? You can go there. But trying to erase the history of an entire population is not easy and can never, ever, I would say, be complete. Everyday black researchers find new evidences of their atrocities and albino people's efforts to cover them up, such as the materials that are shown here. Right? For those who find it hard to believe that albino people, so-called white people, are actually capable of such horrors, just remember that they tried to repeat it with the Khazarian Jews. Remember what they did to the European Jews? This is why the black Jewish relationship, the positive aspects of it, is like right here, right? How we can acknowledge and use even their history, right, to show what they have done to us or to black people, right? Even we, the black Jews, but look what they did to the Khazarian European Jews just about 70 years ago, right? And look at how they fought back. Now, you wonder why the Queen of England never visited the state of Israel after going to 120 different countries around the world? Right? Visiting on official visit. She never visited the state of Israel. Right? And you'll say, well, that's because of white Jews and Palestinians. See, you talk about the Palestinians. What about us as black people? Some want to say the Palestinians were black people, but first, let's look at the obvious history, the real history. The countries most responsible for genocide of blacks in Europe are the British and the Germans. It may be of interest to some that they are both the same people especially in terms of the monarchy by and large now this is kind of getting to a whole other area behind the scenes that's why what happened with the pronounced death of a queen elizabeth of england right of the uk after 70 years of of of, of reigning is very interesting this this prince charles now become king charles the third and also the evidence that that first charles right was beheaded where the monarchy was was basically removed from england and that's where we get cromwell right we get cromwell comes forward and during the cromwell time we had an earlier video we did where we went into the evidence of how cromwell and now they even admit this too the european scholars or whatever on some of their sites they admit that how cromwell destroyed a lot of historical artifacts right so remember that Charles is testified as being swarthy and black. But I know if you look up Prince or King Charles I, you're going to see the fake pictures. Right? If you dig deep enough, you'll find writing and maybe some remnants of some pictures which really show and prove that, yes, he was, genetically speaking, he had black genes. And in today's language, he will be called black. Right? Or at the very least, mixed, but more likely black and that's based on what we showed you a little bit earlier right here right as everywhere on the planet or this earthly plane as we like to refer to the original people of the british isles were black people the romans invaded britain in 43 a.d roman britain was the part of the island of great britain from 43 a.d until circa 410 a.d the romans referred to the imperial province as britannia you know, and then he goes into the detail. They go into the details right here. We leave this on the screen for ones to, you know, still if they want to read, you know what I mean, for themselves and also catch up. 
right on the site right now he goes to a glossary here right of titles and everything you know the glossary of titles and terms let's look at the last three brown right brown no you don't say brown black no he goes down here to swarthy swarthy is of a dark color complexion synonyms is black brunette brunette right swart and dark sanguine is blood red I'm talking about real blood red you know you know when blood coagulates it has a brownish like sometimes if I had cut myself a little nick paper cut and it dries up the blood dries up it's sometimes very close to my own complexion blood blood red the blood dried up boom consisting of or relating to blood like Adam Adomni in the Hebrew sanguinary right of the complexion is ruddy right ruddy also called florid is a reddish crimson color closer to red than to rose right now we know that ruddy is also one of the complexions right to describe certain black tones or undertones right having come to the realization that the albinos were degenerate liars who would lie even in official matters the american declared that the white man spoke with a forked tongue you remember that the american some say it was a native the natives say so he said that white man speaks with a forked tongue because many times he made treaties and contracts with with the native people and he uh, he just went against it he, he went 180 degree against his plighted his given word right this this is the proof of it right realizing that the albinos will invariably create fake paintings and drawings of white people to depict those who were really black people the proof is below should we say that the white man paints with a forked palette right now you already know like queen charlotte's description may serve as a benchmark for the descriptive terms below my right? queen charlotte why right? if we look at her right here i mean there's many ones and ones with her very complexion right who are qualified and classified as black people and we also have black women who are black or somewhat mulatto they have children with um white men men who are considered white even like today's history you know with uh, with Mar markle and all of that you know like the Mar you know yeah you, you know you know what i'm talking about right um so it says right here yeah so it goes into that we already know that right that's already been proven right there also others right descriptions below right of others right you know everybody from queen anne of bohemia king charles the first you know, King Charles the first, right? We have right here, second son of James the sixth of Scotland. You know what I mean? You know, that's the one that they had killed right there. But that's, these are all the bogus pictures. So it's comparing the bogus pictures that they lie and try to make you believe. And then the actual descriptions, historical descriptions of what they look like, right? So just coursing through this right here. You know what I mean? Um, you can see the black man, black core, black this, black that. And notice there's other ones. Let me just highlight the ones that are described as being black, right, or ruddy, or brown, right? She playfully nicknamed her black crow in reference to her dark complexion. Notice that right there. This one right here, right? We have this one down here. Who is this? Or his wife, right? His wife, like nicknamed their black crow. Right, because of the black complexion. Right? I mean people do this today. Right? Somebody is dark, they compare it with something or something that is dark. The black prince, he was swarthy, right? That because there was others that was not as black as him. So this is how we you know, this is how we describe even today, right? Aside from the super racism, right? But even though many of the black people from our investigation, right, didn't recognize what was up. So it's almost like we were dwelling side by side in an integrated kind of so-called Europe. And we thought like everything was cool. We're human beings. They're human beings. But behind the scenes, many of them took set against us, right? Took set against us because they identified all these niggas, all these blacks. You know, they may not have used the term niggas, but they had a problem with us being black. We never had a problem with them being albinos. Right? We may have had a problem with their behavior, right? Or, you know, their their um lack of civilization because the blacks were the civilizers in that time. So it's almost like we created something. This is another case in point where black people created something, 
right? And basically, it gets taken from them. And we've been talking about hip-hop, music, this, that, invention, so forth, and so on. And it sounds strange. So then we say, well, how could they do this? Well, they're only doing what they have done before. So it's like in law. If we look at what they call in law, you know, when we look at in law, they say um, one's, um, how do they say, um, priors. If we look at their priors, we'll see this is true. Now, there's also names and crests, right, uh, coat of arms of some ancient black British people, right? Let's just zoom out right here and just try to go through this right here just to show different, different countries right here, right? Different coat of arms, right? You can see the different coat of arms with clearly black people on it, clearly, right? Black persons, black peoples. Right? This is another level of proof. Of course, they try to explain this away too. Right? You know what I mean? I mean, you've seen this with your eyes. Right? And what's so interesting is that if it was not what we think it is, why did they hide it? That's the question. If this was not what we think it is, if this is just like, you know, white people using black faces, right? But, well, you have to ask yourself, why that? But then when we find out from actual testimonies of the time that the people were black themselves, then it becomes like, okay, th this is, y'all just lied about that. You know what I mean? So we, is this like, like you see, like the Batman, <laughs> right? And interesting, right? Batman, that dark knight. Think about the dark knight. Now you get a different angle of that, dark knight, right? And so you can see how even in their, their art, right, so-called, you know, the mo movies, how they try to demonize just the fact that some of our ancestors were black, they were called dark, now this dark is nefarious, like the black nobility. They were a bunch of evil things, doing all these evil things, when the real truth of the matter is the evil that was done against the black people who were the nobility, who were the royalty, and who effectively, you know, were ruling Europe, right? Both as the black Holy Roman Empire and also the black dynasty, right, of the Stuarts. Right, the Stuarts. Keep in mind the Stuarts, right? Also known as the Jacobites. So these are also other royal coats of arms, right? Royal coats of arms, so forth and so on. That's why they can tell you things like Colin Powell and certain people, Diana, they were related a little bit. They give you the superficial story. Even the one who married in, right, to the royal family recently, they give you the, the, the cover story, but it goes much deeper. Right, it goes much deeper, you know. They give you the cover story, a feel good story, you feel good about it, you know. What I mean, you keep it pushing, right, and you don't go much deeper, right. And so, you really don't connect the truth, therefore, you're not able to spot the lies because you can't connect that the truth over here connects to the truth over here. That means that these two truths connect together because they both are true and they bring a bigger truth than everything between that doesn't agree with either or truth is a lie. Right, so these are just some of the families here once again in their coat of arms, right? Blackamore, Borthwick, right? You know what I mean? Go further, right? We have the ancient coat of arms of Ashford and Agas, right? Go forward a little bit more, right? The Marquis of Hertford, right? Hertford, right? Later on, they'll call it Hartford, Hertford, right? Notice these coat of arms right here, right? These are coat of arms. That means that there must have been these ones over there fighting for them, or they just were just idolizing blackness, being white people. Not likely since the description of many of them were as black people too, right? So even the ones whose coat of arms these were and the families are described as heavily being black people. We just showed you that a little bit earlier, right? This is more detail down here, right? Just coming to the fullness just to give a good view of this sense, you know, UK, Britain is in the news and we might be thinking of it, oh, that's just white, white, white. Well, it wasn't always so, right? And if we recognize, well, how did it get to the way it is now? This will also show us a lot about what went on, right? Even with the colonization of Africa and other black places, right? And that could have never happened except for the removal of the Black Holy Roman Empire, the Black influence there, as well as the Black dynasty of Britain, namely the Stuarts. You know what I'm saying? So right here, we look, assumed to be Eva von um, um, Chonal, right? First wife of, of Jacob Reinhardt, right? 
this his armorial panel circa 1521 basil historis is a museum so notice it sorry notice this right here notice the features of this woman right here notice this right here come on now come on now are we really are we really gonna lie to ourselves so when we identify that this is a black woman now they're gonna try to tell us that she was some African slave or something instead of a noble woman in Europe she couldn't be a noble woman because she was black and that's not so-called racism we could even say that's not anti-semitism that is anti-semitism and racism but this time against black people right and even add on to that against we the black Jews in Europe right starts to make a lot of historical sense right some of the Jews previously even the Khazarian Jews they understood this history and this is why they made alliances with black people so some of the black the you know the the, the, the white Jewish and black and black people and Jewish white Jewish alliances was based on this some of it was based on the fact that some of the white Jews even have testified that they recognize you know the pre-existing um, black blood and black presence even among Judaism the Israelites and the Bible right there are those European and Jewish scholars white Jewish scholars we can point to their works and their research where they clearly have gone on the record to identify and say so Right? So just pointing to the evidence, right? the evidence of the matter, right? and they say a picture is like a thousand words. It's a beautiful picture right here. Right? You know? And there's more like this. And the thing is that some of these things are being destroyed. Right? Some of it are being destroyed. Um, but some is still, um, how can I say, available in picture art. There's a lot of art that we have pictures of that they claim they don't know what happened to them. Just want to point out what you know what would go on, you know what would go on, right? So what's been what's been struck out is the albino racial conjecture and obfuscation. You see things like that, it becomes obvious, right? We should just settle on that, right? If it was a white, if it was done white, and that's the original, what could we say? That's the way it is. You don't have to make up anything. Why are they making up something? Because they're seeking to lie, right? They're seeking to lie. Right? Look at the Holy Roman Empire, other art here, as you can clearly see right here. Right? A little bit that was at the cock until the cock crow. Right? Interesting as that goes, right? The cock being black and even on other levels of that terminology, right? BBC. Speaking about the BBC, you know? So we go on right here, right? And we also know how it all was undermined. Another way, sexually, it was undermined too. This is where Othello comes in. Right, that play by Shakespeare, it brings out how ones undermine their own rulership because they didn't really, they were not able to see the big picture, right, and the details as they connect with the big picture. And thus, the Thirty Year War and the English Civil War came about. And after that, like many of these buildings that have things like that, some of these buildings still have it, but we've seen some pictures where ones have gone there and say, Look at what they did, they actually took it off. We know that many times they probably didn't destroy the original black art, but they basically did a clone, right, and made, and made it more like um, albino-like, so to speak. I mean, look at this right here, the Pope, right, you can see clearly the features. This proves that black people were everywhere. Not saying we aren't agreeing with every single thing because it's black, but we're just pointing out the fact that it is black, you know what I mean? And then we can get into another another side of, of reasonment right even ones and ones who, who we have right here we have oh that's a fake picture there that's been faked and how we say it's been faked because also no way of knowing if this Fuja was actually an albino that's the thing he could have been right some of them could have been white but because they they've made everything but look at his coat of arms you see what I'm saying he actually could have been white but notice his coat of arms right there so they're telling us that that person is black or dark right there because somebody was burning a candle, but the candle did not, the soot did not get on there. So looking at this right here, it could be that this one actually was. One thing we know about the black royalty and the black nobility, it is not obvious anywhere in the record documentation that they practice a, a racism, right, against white folks, right? In other words, the racism... In other words, they were not anti-white people because they were white. 
many times they might married white people and this is where the albino or the, or the mulatto kind of comes in but it's very clear we can see once the more obvious um, albino or white you know so-called European comes into the picture we start to see the racism as soon as they start to come to power we get the demonstration of their racism especially the enslavement in America right with black peoples we say Hebrews Israelites with black people from Africa right you know West Africa and also ones that were former nobility after the war being deported right or expelled to America and the Caribbean right as either indentures indenture servants or as slaves and some of the testimonies I've heard from the Caribbean about some ones and ones kind of match that not to get into more details here because we actually are a little bit over time on this video but have to point out you know black Britain you know black Britain right the half of the story that you've never been told the half of black history right let's put it like that that you've never been told I mean is it so obvious or not obvious right is that soot because the person is portrayed as black or is that actually the fact that they were black notice the coat of arms right here they're like Starbucks you see on the other side the woman holding it's a little like Starbucks ish right well, that's a mermaid right interesting how this goes so is that a black man and that's a white woman right or is that perhaps maybe a mulatto coming from black genes but mixed with so-called white genes and then coming down to us as uh, Elizabeth the first sort of you know red now, you remember how we did a video about red about um, Malcolm X it was called big red if you've seen any of his picture he was very red right did you think that we only had a Malcolm X looking person today we didn't have ones in the past come on now ain't nothing new under the sun right so the coat of arms combined coat of arms the the toucher 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 and writer it might be mispronouncing it excuse I right there right Hermonymous her her run Hieronymus Hieronymus um Holster 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 if that's that look at this right here this is also more art right one thing we say about some Europeans some Europeans maybe it's because of the art right because the art they keep some things around in some of the countries right you know but in other countries it could be because the threat is not so much there so we see this right here right black coat of arms right here Bavarian no, this is Bavarian state they don't seem to have a problem right just putting on display certain art right German cities towns of black kings crowned in their crests this is facts right that explains why some of the white women in Germany and other places positively react to black men even though they were under a lot of Nazi mind control they was able to break that mind control because there's some there's some deeper connection with blackness that in their genes even the albino woman that chose to have children with a lot of the black soldiers you know what I'm saying so um right um so this is what the interesting what he's saying right here like sometimes how they you know like another way you know degenerate albinos denigrate black images was to add a loop airing to black men right since serious men did not wear earrings the implications clear even bishops so they do little things I want you to take a screenshot of that right there they do little things you know what I mean and we might not notice them overtly like things like this right here might they add that there right kind of interesting how they do that you know they add little earrings so forth and so on but also notice elsewhere what we see we see the black woman it looks like a black woman right yeah yes the two over here this is like a, this is a bishop they notice this right here right the black woman that goddess kind of link even up in Europe right the symbolic logic but here as he, as he mentioned they do little things like add these earrings right we can't really be sure about that right but based on some of the research he's bringing forward we are more sure that these seem to be additions right as you can see on some of these they're not there right but some of our researchers might have caught them in the act 
So you see these ones here that don't have the earrings? So we get those ones with the earrings, without the earrings. Like we find an older book that doesn't have the earring and it's a newer thing and he put the earring in. That can be a direct proof. So if we have that, please send that forward. Definitely. So right here, 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 you can clearly see this, right? So some of us that might have, you know, some inclination to history in Europe, we might think, oh, am I being too white? I'm on this, I'm a Negro PN? No. You maybe just are recognizing in your genes, so to speak, right, that there's more than so-called meets, you know, um, the whitewashed eyes. You know what I mean? Debunking the albino myth of the blackamoor. That's the next thing we got to get on that. Because some of us just receive all of this. This reminds me of the caricatures they did, you know, over in America. You know, the little dolls they did. They were very dark and had these kind of exaggerated features even though most black people really did not look like that. You know what I mean? But they use that as their caricature, right? Falsely called portrait of a blackamoor, the French painter, right? Clearly, this fez-wearing child is the son of a very wealthy Ottoman noble. That he would be called a blackamoor is further proof of albino degeneracy. In other words, they like to do that there, right? They like to call people these names. And because it's black, they figure that a lot of us will be like, oh, black, look, they think black, black, black. So we will, we will repeat what they're saying because they say black, but actually what they're doing is taking away from the real fact, right? They're trying to say like, oh, he was some slave, you know, like he was some slave boy, you know, and, and notice how they do that, right? Um, we tried perusing ancient books for the word more. Ancient writings, ancient writings, right? And not to get into detail, and these were the only ancient books found with the word more. And in all cases, more only referred to certain North African tribes predating, predating, I want you to zoom in on that, predating the Muslims, right? As we have shown with the racist falsified translation of Hammurabi's code done by Leonard William King, albinos will put false words in their translation. Well, we found this out when we do our biblical Hebrew literacy, right? We get into the science of the translation, linguistics. We found it out many times. That those words are false is substantiated by the fact that the word is completely missing from a book about wars with North African tribes. So we have books that are about wars, the ones they call the Moors, but the word Moor is not to be found in this book about North Africans that predate a lot of this. So this shows us that at somewhere along the line they slipped this in, right? And it was like a conspiracy. The rest of them knew, the rest of the scholars knew it was a lie and they co-signed a lie. To further demonstrate the abject stupidity of these albino falsifiers of history, so-called Moors are Muslim Muslim men don't wear earrings. See, see, this is the next po point. In fact, I mean, you tell me, Muslim men wear earrings? To pierce their, ear the pierce their earlobes may be considered doing harm to oneself, which is forbidden. The wearing of earrings in general is prohibited because it's considered to be, quote, imitating woman, right? The piercing of ears. Now, there's one place in the Torah where ears are pierced Right, the all to the ear, and that's when one is like in a voluntary servitude on that level, right? But that's not what he's talking about here. So, as we can all see, the lie of the Blackamoor, like so many other things, is merely albino fantasy, albino denial, um, self defense, albino self defense, racism, and just plain meanness and degeneracy. After all, that's what the albinos albinos do and many of these albinos have done right but to those who you know break free of that lie and seek to expose the truth even if they are you could say albino al albino related give thanks you know because we know there's the few right but this is the document that we're speaking about right here and we kind of went through this because this was like one of the subject matters we sought to touch on right you know, and, you know, before we went into this other subject matter, but right now, right here, right now, you know, so this substantiates why we can say King James and the black royalty, 
right? And why many of us say that he was black despite the knee-jerk racial albino reactions. There's a lot of reaction that's come from a lot of black folks. A lot of black folks are trying to dismiss it and they don't even know or even have gone into that history, right, that we have just gone into, right, to basically demonstrate, you know, give a demonstration. Notice the different kind of pictures that are out there. So we have King James the first of England, but then we have King James the sixth and the first, right? We have King James the sixth and the first right here, right? We can get into some of the details. We'll zoom this in for ones and ones. King James was a king of Great Britain, France, and Ireland. He was a black man, and the King James Bible is named after him. You could read a little bit more on that as we're going to catch up with um, the demonology of King James, right? And this is something that I think is very important that King James was a black man, not a gay or homosexual white man, right? There are two different James, right? And we, and we know that they have done this before where they replace a real historical character by a make-believe character and everybody believes a make-believe. So those who say that King James was a gay white man, that's not the King James of real history. We just showed you real history, and we're demonstrating right here real history, right? Real history right here. So to touch on the demonology, right, of King James, you know, at least that which came out, we'd like to address that, you know, as we move forward right there, right? This is going to be on this subject matter, right, as we pick up right here this document right here demonology in three books you know during the time of king james you know d uh, uh, divided into three books written by the high and mighty prince james by the grace of god king of england scotland france and ireland and defender of the faith right so hope to pick up more on this right here as we move forward so shalom habarim shalom like share subscribe hit the notification button again if you already hit it hit it click it off and click it on again just so one to one can get the notification also be sure to sign up for rastafari israelites on the youtube rastafari israelites like to get up the numbers so we can do more live streaming and interactive you know reasonments even you know presentations other things jaw willing coming up in the future Shalom Chabarim, Shalom.